Good morning everyone and welcome to this week's assembly. If you remember during the last lockdown in March I did an assembly every week where uh, we set you a challenge and you ha had to provide entries to that challenge to your heads of year. Well this is the restart of the lockdown challenge assembly. But before I share this week's challenge with you I just want you to listen to a song and uh, read the lyrics. And the question that I want you to think about while you're doing that is what have you done today to make yourself feel proud? When I tried to play the song on the PowerPoint presentation, the sound was terrible. So I've just provided you with the lyrics. But if you want to actually listen to the song as well, because it's really upbeat and motivational, it's called Proud by Heather Small. Um, and that's the theme of, of this week's assembly from me. What have you done today to make yourself feel proud was the question that I asked you last. What I'm going to share with you next is some of the things that our staff have been doing that makes them proud of their, themselves or their families proud of them as well. And first up, we have Mrs Forrest, who set herself a challenge of reading uh, 50 books in a year. When she got to June of that year, she found that she'd already surpassed the 50. So she doubled that to 100 and then actually ended up reading 135 books. That's a brilliant challenge, Mrs Forrest. Well done. And uh, you should be proud of that. We also have Miss Evans um, who took up knitting as a new challenge and she's very proud of this and rightly so. These are just two of the many things that she's made. Um, some lovely little jumpers there for her nephew. Excellent effort Miss Evans. And Miss Body has run a marathon. Miss Body's an excellent runner but she challenged herself to do a marathon. She was really proud of that and look at her time and pace as well. I don't think I could ever manage a marathon. A half marathon was enough for me. Well done, Miss Body. Another one of our runners who is very proud of himself, and again, rightly so, is Mr. Brown. He's completed many running challenges over the last year, but in particular, I think this one deserves a special mention. The Hard Moors uh, Running Challenge, 55 miles, a phenomenal effort, Mr. Brown. And there he is looking really pleased with himself and rightly so with his medal on. Mr. Tippy simply sent me a picture um, of his cauliflower. Uh, he has been growing vegetables this year and he's very proud of that as well. So just if you ask Mr. Mr. Tippy uh, for some tips on how to grow vegetables, I'm sure he can help you. Another new skill for another member of staff, Dr. Smith. I know she shares a lot of this on Twitter. Um, it's her drawing. She started a drawing journal and she's been completing a small sketch every day of everyday household items and there's some fantastic ones that we can uh, have a look at here and on Twitter as well. Well done Dr Smith. Another one of our runners Mrs Slane has set herself two challenges. The first one of course has to be a running challenge. She is attempting to run a minimum of 5k every day and I know she'll absolutely smash that. Um, and the second one is a reading challenge. Um, she's reading a number of the Philippa Gregory books, which are quite weighty novels, and she's up to book five. Well done, Mrs. Slane. Another member of staff who is very rightly proud of themselves is Mr. Lamb. Um, I won't attempt to play this little clip because I know the sound sounds terrible um, over a PowerPoint, but I will provide the link for you to listen to this. It's absolutely excellent. It was recorded remotely and mixed at home by me, who was Mr. Lamb, not me. Um, and one of the guest musicians making an appearance is Mike Lovett, who is a renowned trumpet player, but apparently is best known for uh, the recent James Bond films and on the Harry Potter soundtrack. Absolutely fa fantastic, Mr. Lamb. Well done. Mrs Laidlaw has taken up Taekwondo with her son. Um, she's recently achieved uh, one of her first belts and she's aiming to get to a black belt before she is 50. So you'll have to ask her how many years that is until she gets to the grand old age of 50. Well done. Um, and again, something else to be proud of, Mrs Laidlaw. Lots of runners amongst our staff. Um, Mr Earnshaw has completed a virtual Great North Run um, and achieved a personal best. The last Great North run he did um, was back in 1994, so um, a great challenge for him and again something to be very proud of. Well done Mr Earnshaw. One of the things that I'm most proud of, of myself this year is the fact that I have increased the number of miles that I've um, undertaken for exercise, a total of 735, 
which um, is a mixture of running and cycling. And as you can see here, one of my greatest achievements was a 35 mile bike ride. I think it was the thought of the ice cream at the end of it that managed to uh, keep me going as well. Mrs Atkinson, who is another one of our runners, but what she's really proud of um, isn't connected with running. Instead, it's learning a language. She's been learning to speak Spanish for the last 62 days. Um, this is a little screenshot of her work from Duolingo, which is an online learning app. So um, well done to uh, Mrs Atkinson and her Spanish speaking. Mrs Langford has been reminiscing about her university days and she's decided to reread some of uh, the texts on the screen there in their original language, either French or German. There's a little message on the bottom of the screen from Mrs uh, Langford. I'm going to attempt to pronounce it. Please don't judge me on my pronunciation and my accent, uh, Mrs Langford. La vie est belle et il ne faut pas l'oublier. Meilleur vœu pour l'année 2021. And we have Mrs O'Donnell, who's very proud of the fact that she's managed to learn a new skill of how to hang wallpaper. Well done to you, Mrs O'Donnell. Mr McCready has designed and built this very fine specimen of a door in front of you here. Very well done on that, Mr McCready. Another thing to be proud of. And finally, we have Miss Gray, who is proud um, of a very creative little bird box this year. Well done, Miss Gray. So now we come to our students and these are students who we are very proud of. We are very proud of all of our students, but heads of year have asked to give a special mention to these students. Holly E, first of all, in year seven, who is apparently just brilliant at everything. Organised, kind, focused, studious and well-mannered. That's a fantastic accolade there. Holly, very well done. We are very proud of you. And Martin W in year seven, recognised for facing up to his fears and tackling them head on, resulting in a very positive outcome for him. Again, very well done to Martin. We're proud of you too, Martin. And in year eight, Mr Dinsdale has described uh, student Ben P as having made an extremely encouraging start to Fram. He's mature, kind, friendly, has settled into a new school seamlessly, and Ben has apparently all of the personal qualities that Mr Dinsdale would hope for in a year eight student. Zora D, a lovely, kind, respectful and resilient student who continues to impress every day. Mr Dinsdale says he would trust Zora explicitly as she has continued to show responsibility and a mature outlook beyond her years. Very well done, Ben and Zora. We are very, very proud of you. In year nine, Dr Smith would like to commend Alexis and Grace, who have both completed some outstanding work this week. Uh, their English teacher in particular is very impressed with their commitment to work. And we are really proud of at how they have managed the transition from being in school to working from home. In year 10, Miss Wilson has recommended Chloe S. Through difficult times, Chloe always puts a smile on her face and tackles the day ahead, one step at a time. And Francesca T, whose constant drive to do well and achieve high grades has been noted, a truly conscientious young lady. Well done, both Chloe and Francesca. You'll see that the Year 11 slide is blank. This isn't because there isn't any Year 11 students worthy of a special mention, but because actually there are so many. We're really proud of how you've done in your recent mocks and how you're responding to your remote uh, learning work, considering the, the current circumstances. So Mrs King's going to be in touch with uh, you separately because there are a number of exceptional students that we wish to commend. Well done, Year 11. We are very proud of all of you. In year 12, uh, Miss Mish Roberts has recommended uh, Daniel S. And actually, he's been recommended by so many staff because he's just the politest young man in sixth form. And I agree with this. When I see Daniel working on the tills, his manners are impeccable. His personality and how he speaks to others can make a difference to your day. Uh, and Miss Mish Roberts doesn't think that Daniel actually realises this. So we wanted you to know, Daniel. Very well done. We are very proud of you. Joel B has apparently the best set of revision cards that Miss Mish Roberts has ever seen, and they are very well used. He's hit the ground running with his uh, learning as well. So well done to you, Joel. We are very proud of both of you. In year 13, Lucy H's work ethic and organisation are exemplary. Her biology folders are beautiful and a real model of what an A-level student is capable of with regards to their independent learning. Archie H also comes highly commended, particularly from the geography department and his approach to coursework. 
And Mr. Sutil has also been very impressed with his tech coursework and the table that he has produced. He's used his time very wisely since September. Very, very well done, Lucy and Archie. We are proud of you both too. And finally, this week's lockdown challenge is to write a short reverse poem. I'm going to read a short poem to you written by a 10 year old and hopefully you'll be able to see what we mean by a reverse poem. This poem is about dyslexia. Dyslexia. I am stupid. Nobody would ever say I have a talent for words. I was meant to be great. That is wrong. I am a failure. Nobody could ever convince me to think that I can make it in life. And yet when we read the poem in reserve, sorry, in reverse, the meaning has completely changed. I can make it in life. Nobody could ever convince me to think that I am a failure. That is wrong. I was meant to be great. I have a talent for words. Nobody would ever say I am stupid. What a fantastic poem. That's a challenge for you this week, everyone. Write your own reverse poems and email to your head of year by Thursday the 14th of January at 3pm. And obviously, just like last time, there's a chance for you to win a £10 uh, gift voucher of your choice as well. Thank you very much for listening to this assembly. Have a fantastic week. Next week's assembly is led by uh, Miss O'Neill, who is our new assistant head. Take care, everyone.